Okay, so here we are in the muscular system. Um, this is lab activity not, or exercise nine. Um, so this, for this, you'll be spending a lot of time in the virtual lab learning the muscles, and there will also be a lab activity associated with this lab. Um, so as we look at the muscles in your body, you have over 700 um, different muscles in your body. Many of them, there are paired, meaning if you have one on one side of the body, there will be one on the other side of the body. As you're looking at usually a model of muscles, I call this mus a muscle man, um, the, usually the right side of the body shows a more superficial view of his muscles, meaning muscles that are closer to the skin surface. And the left side of his body shows a deeper view. What that means is that the left side of his body will show muscles that have been removed on top of them. So for example, the pectoralis major muscle um, goes right over your chest on both sides, but on the left side of the body, and again, when I say left, I'm referring to his left anatomically, um, but his left pectoralis major muscle has, be re has been removed to show the pectoralis minor muscle below it. Uh, the deltoid muscles are the two triangular shaped muscles on the sh shoulder. Uh, the trapezius is the big triangular muscle on the back. We'll get to a back view. The frontalis muscle is on the forehead. You have a zygomaticus muscle that will attach to the zygomatic bone. Uh, the masseter is the big chewing muscle to help you chew. And then you have an orbicularis oculi, a circular muscle around your eye that helps you blink. An orbicularis oris muscle, a circular muscle around your lips as if you were blowing a kiss. So as we work our way down, um, here's your biceps, your triceps are in your arm. There's a lot of muscles in your forearm. Um, the sartorius muscle is this long muscle in your um, thigh. It's the longest muscle in the body. Um, and then the rectus abdominis is your six pack muscle. So I have great news for you today. You all have a six pack. Um, it's called the rectus abdominis. It's just easier to see in some people than others. And that's my cheesy joke for the day. Um, more muscles are shown that you have four quadricep muscles. The rectus femoris is on top. The rectus lateralis, the vastus lateralis is on the lateral side. And we'll go more into detail. But in general, you have over 700 muscles in the body. You're not going to be expected to learn all 700. Um, but again, a lot of them are paired. This is a model that we have in lab showing the neuromuscular junction. So again, showing um, where the axon ending will connect with a muscle cell. So you can see here kind of where the sarcoplasm, sarcolemma, um, this is showing the axon and then it's, we're zooming in on the neuromuscular junction with the presynaptic membrane, the synaptic cleft, the space between the two, and then the postsynaptic membrane. Here are the muscles of the face. Um, again, spent a lot of time in the virtual lab working on the muscles of the face. Um, I talked a little bit about them. The occipital frontalis goes all the way in the back, and then it goes over the skull to the front. So it starts in the back and it goes to the front. Um, you have a, this is a superior auricularis muscle, also known as the temporalis muscle, but um, that's kind of by your temporal bone. Muscle located right here. And um, the buccinator muscle is right kind of in where the dimples would be. Your voice just got super. Yeah. Good. What, what did you just do? Your voice got back to clear. Oh, something happened with these things. Man, they are not working. No, no they, they're, they're, working. they're good. They're good. Well, <laughs> now, no. I, I turned up my volume though, and I, it's because I lost the microphone. I just got a notification on my computer. Bummer. You guys are going to have to help me figure these out. I'll work on it. Yeah, so make sure your phone is like off the Bluetooth of it because it can connect back to it. It is. Okay. Yeah, and then that should keep yeah. you on the computer by itself. It, it does that with the uh, non Apple material. Man, technology 101. You guys didn't think you'd be helping me with this, probably. Okay. Sorry about that. Okay, I'll work on it. I'll Zoom with my husband and lecture him on muscles or something. Okay. 
All right, back to the face. Um, what other important, well, okay, so you can see that you have a lot of face muscles here. Um, a lot of them will be attached to the skin, so they allow for facial expression. So um, the zygomaticus muscles, they attach to your zygomatic bone, that'll help curve your um, lips up to smile. The depressor anguli oris muscle comes out your um, lips at an angle, and they would depress your lips as if you were frowning. You have muscles on your nose. Um, I think the muscles in bold here are probably ones you should focus on. I haven't looked at the test yet, um, but the, the muscles that you should focus on will probably be the ones that are also in the virtual lab. So I doubt all of these will be tested on, but I would focus learning the ones that you go over in the virtual lab. Um, the sternocleidomastoid muscle is an important muscle because it, it attaches behind the ear and then it attaches to your sternum. And it's the big muscle you can feel in your neck. If you kind of um, stretch your neck out, you can feel your sternocleidomastoid muscle. It helps turn your head back and forth. All right, the temporalis muscle is on your temporal bone. It will also help with chewing. Um, so these are showing kind of the model of the muscles of mastication, which is chewing, the temporalis and the masseter. The masseter muscle has been cut, but the masseter goes right over the ramus portion of your mandible. Um, and then this model just shows more muscles underneath the masseter called your pterygoid muscles, a lateral and a medial pterygoid, the P is silent. Um, so these are all muscles of chewing. So here's a look at the muscle. It gives you the origin, insertion, and action of the muscle. Um, I will get back to you guys if you need to learn all of the origin, insertions, and actions of each muscle, but I doubt it. I'll take a look at the test and get back to you and give me a reminder if I don't. But I doubt you need to know all those. Um, here, you have six muscles that control the movements of your eyeball. So six muscles are attached to your eyeball. The superior oblique muscle comes and attaches to your eye at an angle, and the inferior oblique muscle attaches to the eye at an angle. And then the other four eye muscles will be named for what side of the eye they attach on. So the lateral rectus muscle attaches to the lateral eyeball. The superior rectus muscle attaches to the top of the eye. Um, the medial rectus muscle will be attached to the medial side of the eyeball, and the inferior rectus muscle attaches to the bottom side of the eyeball. So each one, when it contracts, it'll twist your eye in a different direction. Um, so if the medial eye muscle, the medial, lactus, ladder, medial rectus muscles contract, they'll cause you to see cross-eyed. They'll move both eyeballs inward. If the lateral rectus muscle contracts, on the right eye, it'll cause your right eye to look laterally to the outside. So here's a look at origin insertions and actions of all of the eye muscles and specifically focusing on the actions, the superior rectus that's attached to the top of your eyeball. When that pulls on the eye, it'll roll your eyeball up. So elevating the eyeball, inferior rectus depressing the eyeball and then laterally immediately rotating it and again, the inferior and superior oblique move the eyeballs at an angle, um, kind of elevating and abducting the eye or depressing and abducting the eye at the same time. Okay, then the muscles of the neck. Um, a lot of these muscles of the neck are associated with swallowing um, or also the muscles of the tongue. And you can see them here. And um, a lot of them are named with hyoid because they are attached to your hyoid or near the hyoid bone. So that's why you see it hyoid bone, um, the hyoid suffix in a lot of these words. Um, again, a lot of this is just kind of memorizing and learning. That's kind of what a lot of anatomy is. So again, the virtual lab will hopefully be a great tool for just uh, going over these ones. So here's a look at the action of the muscles of the neck. Um, again, a lot of them have to do with not necessarily swallowing, kind of turning the head and neck, uh, depressing the mandible, depressing your hyoid bone, because a lot of them will be attached, have their insertion in the hyoid. Here are muscles of the thorax. So again, the thorax is your rib cage. So these will be muscles that are attached to the ribs or surrounding the rib cage themselves. Um, you can see the pectoralis major 
and the pectoralis minor underneath it after it's been exposed or cut off on the left side. Here's your sternocleidomastoid. Um, the external intercostals um, and internal intercostals are the muscles between your ribs and they help with inhalation and exhalation. And the, if you can see here where my cursor is, I know it's all like black on white, um, but the external and intercostals have striations that go in opposite directions. So if you were to like put your hands in your pockets, um, those would be the directions that the external and in internal intercostals go. They kind of have these opposite diagonal striations and they help with inhale, inhaling and exhaling. All right, so this takes you through the actions of the muscles um, of the thorax, and a lot of them will have to do with elevating or depressing your ribs with inhalation or exhalation. Uh, the diaphragm was not shown, but that's really your most important breathing muscle. Um, your external intercostal muscles will elevate the ribs to help with quiet inspiration. Internal intercostals will depress the ribs, helping with forced expiration. All right, and then more in the, ob at the muscles in the oblique. In your oblique area, so around your abdomen, you have um, the rectus abdominis, which goes right down the middle. The rectus abdominis is your six pack. It's connected right in the middle with this linea alba, which is a fiber dense connective tissue that connects the two halves of it together. And that is what will soften during pregnancy and your rectus abdominis go to the opposite sides of your stomach as your stomach bulges out. And then you have three layers of abdominal muscles. And the three layers go right on top of each other. You can see the external oblique on the right side. And then on the left side, you see how they're all cut apart to show you the three different layers. The external oblique, the internal oblique, and the transversus abdominis are your three abdominal muscle layers. So those are the muscles of the abdomen. And I'm thinking he's giving you a lot of orange and insertions and actions. So you might need to know some of these, but I'll uh, let you know before the exam. Um, the lab exam will most likely be. Um, We can barely hear you, Professor. We can't hear you. Anything now? Yes. Oh, guys, so sorry. I'm sending these iPods back. They've been not helpful. Okay. Uh, what I said, the muscles of the perineum focus on the ones in bold that you should know. Um, thanks for telling me that you couldn't hear me. So sorry about that, guys. Okay. Then if we go to the muscles of the back, these will be the muscles that help you do a pull-up. Uh, the trapezius is a diamond-shaped muscle or a kite-shaped muscle. It will have an attachment on the base of your skull over to your scapula and then to your spine. So it makes this nice uh, diamond shape, the trapezius. Again, you can only see half of the trapezius because um, um, it's been removed on the right side. So here's your trapezius. Um, the deltoid muscle, again, is on the shoulders and the latissimus dorsi is the large muscle in the back, really your largest back muscle. The triceps brachii is on the exterior side of your arm. And then these are the uh, muscles that make up the rotator cuff. The supraspinatus is the muscle above the spine. 
and then infraspinatus and teres minor are below the spine with the teres major having attachment having an attachment on your humerus uh, you have some rhomboid muscles which will attach your scapula to your spine so when they contract they'll help you to move your shoulder blades kind of back um, to try to touch each other the levator scapulae muscle helps to elevate your um, scapula as if you're trying to shrug your shoulders um, so these are some of the muscles of the back this takes a look at the rotator cuff muscles um, here you can have this sub, you see the subscapularis which is the muscle on the anterior side of the scapula here's your teres major attaching to the head of the humerus and then here are your supraspinatus above the spine on the back of the scapula the infraspinatus below the spine and then the teres minor is above the teres major you can see where those attach so that's your rotator cuff um, a lot of injury to rotator cuff muscles in pitchers, volleyball players, um, people who use their uh, shoulder joint regularly in that action of movement. Okay, so here are muscles of the back, the rotator cuff. Um, oh, let's see here. Then moving our way down the arm, the biceps brachii is called the biceps because it has two heads, a short head and a long head. The triceps on the back part will have three heads, so that's why it's called triceps. Um, and let's see here. This model is throwing me off because this is upside down, but here's your biceps brachii. And then we're getting into some of the muscles of the forearm, which we'll show you a better picture of. Um, here's a look at the anterior arm with your deltoid and pectoralis. The biceps, the brachioradialis muscle is on the lateral side of the forearm, but it starts in the brachium, the upper arm. The pronator teres muscle helps to pronate your forearm. Um, and then we have many flexor, palmaris, extensor muscles in the forearm. Flexor muscles will always be on the anterior side of the forearm because they help to flex your fingers up or pull your fingers. Um, the flexor retinaculum, remember, maybe you don't from lecture, but the retinaculum is a sheet of tissue that holds all the tendons together in your wrist and your ankle. So this is the flexor retinaculum holding all the tendons together from these flexor muscles. You have one um, tendon from the palmaris longus muscle that goes over the flexor retinaculum. And that's why if you look at your own wrists, you can see one tendon. So one tendon uh, travels above that flexor retinaculum, and that's the tendon from the um, palmaris longus muscle. About 10% of individuals do not have um, the palmaris longus muscle or that tendon. So if you move your um, wrist like this, you can't feel or see a tendon. You shouldn't tendon. You shouldn't be alarmed because about 10% of us do not have that muscle. So here's a look at the flexor muscles on the anterior side of the forearm. You can see your brachial radialis on the thumb side and then pronator teres flexor carpi radialis will go to the thumb, palmaris longus, the tendon travels over the flexor retinaculum and then the flexor carpi ulnaris will be on the ulna side of the forearm. That's also um, the side of the forearm where your pinky will be. So kind of just straight memory work for these. I don't have any good um, kind of helps for this. It's just always helpful to know that the radialis muscles will go to the thumb and the ulnaris mu muscles will be on the pinky side. So here are the muscles of your upper extremity. And this is showing the posterior extremity now. So we have our triceps brachii. Um, an anconius, which is a little tiny muscle by your elbow. And then we have more, all extensor muscles on the posterior forearm. And that's because your extensor muscles will be on the posterior side to try to stretch your fingers out. Um, so all of these will be extensor muscles. And again, if it's an extensor ulnaris muscle, that will be on the pinky side. Extensor radialis muscles will be on the thumb side. And they might have digiti minimi with it, and that refers to your pinky. So this muscle will go to the pinky. The tendon of it will go to extend your pinky. The extensor 
pollicis brevis will go to your pollicis, your big thumb. Um, the abductor pollicis longus will abduct your thumb. Um, so a lot of the names of these muscles tell you what they do. And this is why when we first started, I said knowing anatomy is like learning a language. And once you understand some of these like lingo, it'll help you uh, learn more. Um, okay. So here's a look at the posterior forearm, a, um, a model that we would have in lab. And again, you'll see many extensor muscles. The radialis muscles will be on the thumb side. You might have a longus and brevis, and that just refers to the length of it. Extensor digitorum muscle, its tendons will go all the way out to the digits. And then the extensor carpi ulnaris will go to the, on the pinky side of the forearm. The extensor digiti minimi, Muscle is, will have its tendon that controls um, extending or straightening your pinky finger. And again, here's the extensor retinaculum on the posterior side of the wrist, just to hold all these tendons in. Um, so you're not feeling all these tendons in your wrist, you're just feeling the extensor retinaculum and all the tendons are below them. Carpal tunnel syndrome is on the anterior side of the wrist. You have a, a nerve, one of your median nerves goes through the carpal tunnel, which refers to the space underneath this retinaculum on the anterior side of your wrist. And with a lot of um, computer work, if your um, hands are shaped down like this a lot, doing a lot of computer or typing, that can put a lot of strain on the median nerve and like squeeze that nerve. And that's what carpal tunnel syndrome is, really painful. Okay. All right, then to the lower leg. Um, the lower leg muscles, you have four quadriceps muscles, the rectus femoris, vastus medialis, vastus lateralis on the lateral side. The vastus intermedius is below the rectus femoris. They help extend your leg as if you're kicking a soccer ball. The sartorius is the longest muscle in the body. The tensor fascia latte is the muscle on the lateral side of your hip. It will go down and be connected with the iliotibial tract or IT band. You have hip flexor muscles that will be located by your hip bone, the medial compartment of the thigh. Um, uh, these muscles will have to do with adducting your thigh or bringing it back to midline, gracilis and adductor longus. Um, and then we can, we'll get into the lower half of the leg too. The posterior thigh. Um, the posterior thigh, well, I guess this is just showing the medial first. Um, these are adductor muscles that will help with adduction, bringing your leg back to the midline. The gracilis muscle will be the one in the middle, and then an adductor longus is in front of it, the adductor magnus is behind it. And these show, I'm hoping we have one more picture of posterior leg. Okay, so this was again a medial view of the thigh. And then I wanna show you, you can see how the sartorius travels along the medial side of your thigh. The vastus medialis is shown there. And then I wanna show a posterior view of the thigh. These are your hamstring muscles. You have three hamstring muscles. Um, the biceps femoris muscle is on the lateral side of your hamstring. And the semitendinosus and semimembranosus are on top of each other. The semitendinosus is on top. So tendinosus is the one on top. The membranosus is on the bottom, and those make up the medial portion of the uh, posterior thigh, your hamstring muscles. Um, gluteus maximus and medius, these are muscles um, that make up the gluteus region. You also have a gluteus minimus muscle. Um, they help with hip extension, so kind of lifting your leg back and extending your hip. So this is a look at muscle origin insertions and actions um, of the posterior thigh. Then lower leg front view, we can see how your tibia kind of sneaks through. So you can actually see your tibia um, through the muscles. That's why you wear shin guards because you have a bone that's pretty close to the skin surface there. Um, you have your tibialis anterior muscle. Um, then you have the extensor digitorum, which will have its tendons extending into your digits that'll help extend or straighten out your um, toes. Your extensor digitorum muscles will help with dorsiflexion or bringing your toes to your nose. 
the lateral component will all be named, named fibularis after the fibula bone that's on the lateral side of the leg, a longus and a brevis muscle. Then on the posterior, the compartment of the leg, these are your calf muscles, the gastric, nemius, and soleus. Um, gastric, nemius literally means belly of the knee. And if you think about your knee is up here, and this is like the belly or right below the knee. So gastric nemius means knee, the knee belly. Um, so that's the more superficial calf muscle and the soleus is underneath it. Um, the calcaneal or Achilles tendon connects your gastric nemius to your calcaneus, your heel. And you can see the lateral compartment of the leg there, those muscles. Okay, so let's see. I'm just gonna see if he has anything else. I think for a lab exam, you just need to know, know locations. That just gives you that. I'm gonna pause the recording and then answer any questions for you guys.